the beaching axe closed many railway lines. This action could be credited for the birth of the Heritage Railway, which restored some close lines back to full operation as tourist attractions, now the trains drawn by steam locomotives. However, the Bluebell Railway, a line running from East Grinstead to Lewis, that closed in 1958 before Beeching took office at British Transport Commission. That was in 1963, by which time part of the line had already reopened as a preserved steam railway. I grew up when steam was still king. Therefore, I am instinctively attracted to heritage railways as inspiring subjects for photography, not only still photographs, but video, now included in the specifications of many DSLR and mirrorless cameras, producing results of excellent quality. Whether video is of interest depends on output, and whilst camera clubs favour single images for discussion, the video button comes into its own with YouTube and other similar platforms. Nonetheless, I offer a few very basic opinions. There is something special about a moving image of a train, particularly when belching forth masses of steam and smoke. So much for green issues. Now these shots look very dramatic, but a video adds excitement. It is easy to make mistakes in video production, most noticeably hose piping, that is, panning without a sense of purpose and adding ad hoc commentary describing what the audience is quite capable of seeing for themselves. You need a storyboard, a plan. If you have a shot of a train arriving, it is a good idea to show it departing. And had I thought about it, passengers getting off and on the train in between. With video, it is important to have continuity maintained by several shots joined together in post-production and not a single take. Break the action into segments that fit together. For commentary, it is best and easiest to add a voiceover later. Add a touch of history or geography, but don't get bogged down by minutiae such as wheel configuration of the engine. Keep the information general. Most Olympus cameras have a video shortcut red button on the top plate of the camera that bypasses the mode control. However, accessing video via the mode control allows the photographer to adjust white balance, exposure compensation and quality. Use the 4K setting if projection is planned, but a lower resolution should be sufficient for social media. Either way, the file size will be large and the battery will deplete quicker. Autofocus is the default, but I found that with some subjects it kept searching, going in and out of focus when the subject was coming towards the camera. This is overridden by switching to manual focus, either in the menu or if using, for example, the 12 to 100 Pro lens by sliding the ring on the lens barrel, revealing the focus settings. The usual practice for taking videos is to mount the camera on a tripod. However, the latest OMD cameras have sophisticated image stabilization, not only for still images, but also image smoothing for movies. This reduces the impact of unwanted hand or body movements whilst hand holding, and is particularly useful when panning with the subject. I find it less effective if you wish to walk with the camera. But remember, you are recording movement, not creating it by hose-piping the camera. Whilst it might be intended to use video only, I find it particularly effective when mixed with still photographs in a presentation. It surprises the audience when the image suddenly starts to move. 
there used to be a noticeable difference in picture quality, especially when projected, but the introduction of 4K makes the difference insignificant, and in PowerPoint it is easy and very effective to switch seamlessly from stills to video and back again.